Hey guys. Well, I watched the video the other night, my wife and I did, and uh, Zach Higgins, he made a, a saw blade clock, and I thought it was sort of interesting. I had a little time waiting on things to sit up and so forth, so I thought I'd make one. <coughs> Excuse me. And I made one, and he, here's, a, here's a picture of it. it. It turned out real pretty, but I used a 7-inch saw blade. And my wife thought it was a little small. And I only had one 10 inch one left, so I mentioned it to a friend of mine. He's a, you know, a, a cabinet builder type person. And he had all tons of these. So he gave me three or four of the 10 inch ones. So I uh, I went ahead and I got it painted. The first thing you want to do is paint it black. Well, not the first thing. Okay, a lot of people make this mistake. In fact, I've seen Zach Higgins make this, in my opinion. Okay, he sanded it and then cleaned it. Well, and he used acetone, which is, that's fine. Acetone does leave a residue, but I use it too. <clears throat> anyway, you want to clean it before you sand it, because if you sand first, all you're going to do is grind some of that oil and crap into the metal or into whatever. So you, you clean it real good with acetone, you sand it, and then you clean it again, and then you spray it. If you want, you know, like your, your base color to be black, I use Krylon Fusion, matte black, and I sprayed it. And I did that last night because, you know, I, I wanted, to, wanted it to be dry before we started. So let's do a little inventory of everything you're going to have to have. And I guess you're going to have to first start off, you're going to have to have a resin. Now I used uh, Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy. It's a 50-50 mix. And that's all I got left. I got I got some on order, but it ain't here yet because I got a big project and that's not enough. Anyway, you want to use that. Now you got to have yourself a whole messy little old bitty bathroom or Dixie cups or whatever you call them. And you decide how many colors you want. Let's see. Can you see this right here? Okay. Yeah, see I got them all. I got six of them. I'm going to use six different colors. And of course you got to have dyes. So I'm going to use red, white, and blue, and I've got some orange, and some yellow, and some copper. Now the last one I did, I did eight colors, and it got a little too busy. I hey thought. guys, I, I screwed up the first part of this video because I, I didn't realize that this section wasn't in the camera. So I thought I would just come back and at least tell you what I did. I'm not going to do it over again, naturally. But, uh, you know, you take these... This is for all your colors. You take these Dixie cups or whatever you call them. They call them kitchen cups, I think. And you know, you, you use however many you want to use for however many colors, one for each color. So you come in here and you know, wh whether you're using that or that, you, you take this is some of that black diamond powder and it works really well. And uh, you know, you take and you just put a little bit of that in, in one. And you do that for each one of the colors, you know. Well, no different color in either one, and I also use some of this uh, stuff right. Let me see if one of them got a label on it that you can read. Or maybe it, and then one of them got a label. Pigment, white pigment dispersion, whatever that means. I think this is probably commercial right here. Uh, anyway, there's some lick that may ain't been opened yet. Black, but you you also can use this, and you put just a little bit in each one of your cups. Then you come back and you. You want to mix, I sort of left that like that, I thought it was neat. You want to mix about yay much epoxy for this size of a deal. Uh, I use two cups, mix it half and half. I think that shows on the view. You mix that up, and then you come back and you, you know, you, you pour about a third full in each one. You mix it, and then you stir it all up until you get them all mixed up. Then you dribble it on like a deal shows. But it didn't show none of that mixing in my video. And I apologize for that. I just, I could have swore it was in there, but it wasn't. So, you know, that's the way it goes. Here's some of my different colors I got in here. And, you know, now you want to, you want to open these as you use them a little bit before because you got rubber gloves on. They're hard to get open. Uh, these are no problem. So that's how you do it. That that's the part I cut out of the video. All right, we'll pick it up with uh, putting this stuff on and making it. And 
Again, I'm sorry I missed all that, but maybe this will make it better. Okay, so you got you got your epoxy, you got your dyes. Okay, you're gonna have to have two cups, the way I do it anyway. So those are the things you're gonna to have to have. You're gonna to have to have you a, a set of uh, you know latex or nitrile gloves, one or the other. Now something I use, I use cornstarch, and I do that just for very, very simple. Uh -oh, I don't use that much. I use that for a very simple reason. I just put it all over my hands, like this. Now the gloves go on really easy, and it sort of cuts down on the sweat factor. If you can get them, get them open. So see how easy they went on and they're fairly tight. Same thing. Yeah, this is a 50-50 mix like I mentioned. The way I do it, I just pour so much in this one. It was about right. Probably poured too much. But that's okay. I got a use for what's left over. I don't ever waste it. I'm gonna show you in a second. And just over here where I can see what I'm doing. I want it to be pretty near the same. Alright, where are we now? Mm, Alright. That's looking good right here. And the other thing I do is I take I take these and I sit them side by side and I, I look at the level here. I don't know if you can see it or not, but see the levels are even. Alright, so I got those two. And I will pour them together, like so. You have to mix this for about two minutes, and I like to pour from cup to cup. There we are. Here's two things I didn't mention. It's a must. Now this is not a must-have. See that? That's where I, I drained the cups last time. That, that's a pin mold. That's going to make beautiful pins. So I'll do the same thing here. Plus, I'll drain this clear cup in here, too. So I'll just drain these into here like that. And I'll do the same thing on, on these. All right, now. All right, you want to take these rascals here, and you want to pour you some of each one of them. You don't need too awful much. All right, you got those done. Leave this like it is for now. You want to come in here and you want to stir each one of these up. And now you're, you're just getting them colored. Now, your, your basic uh, mixing the two parts together is done. See if I can get you in here a little closer. Now what you want to do, first thing you want to do is you want to take the clear and put some of it on here. You know you're going to make a mess, so you better have newspaper and all that kind of junk. Okay, go ahead and put that in your drain hole, whatever. And don't stick to me. And just use your fingers. Give her, spread it out, get it everywhere. And all over everything, you and everybody else. You know, this is all self-leveling, so you don't have to worry about that. Okay, now. Here's where the fun begins. So, where do we start? Well, I'm just going to start with yellow. You want to just put, hold it up here and just drill it. You know, any kind of old pattern will work. You know, just do it like that. There you go. Go ahead and put that in there. Let it drain. Let's just get this one. And 
Sandy, we're going to put the red on. It's going to look pretty already, isn't it? Yeah, all right, that's good. We're going to clean up this mess when we get done. Okay. Now, here's something else I, I didn't mention. You'll need two things here. You'll need a source of, of, of air. Now, you know, a hair dryer works. Uh, one, I seen one girl, she blows it like this. Uh, I have a tendency to spit when I blow, so I don't want to do it that way. But the way I do it is I use, I use air and I turn it on just a little. First, I need to turn the compressor on. That always helps. This is sort of like where it becomes a little bit subjective, you know, as to what, what, you, know, what you want to do with it. Um, Alright, now here we go. propane torch or a source of heat. I would not recommend using a heat gun and the reason is pretty simple. It picks up air and blows it right on your work. All you want to do is this right here. Got to get rid of the bubbles and then make it settle. Be careful now. There it is, my friends. It will be tomorrow. And I'll come back and check in a couple minutes if there's any air bubbles popping up. But I don't think there will be. So my clockworks is not going to be in for a couple days. <clears throat> so, here, messy today is Friday, and they're not supposed to be here till Sunday. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. And this time of year, even Amazon's slow. There you are, guys. I think it's beautiful. I wanted something more colorful. My, my son's building the shop, and I thought I'd make a clock for a Christmas present for his shop. I think I covered everything, except putting the clock in. And, uh, you know, I'm 
I'll have to epoxy a, a hanger on the back, which, you know, the, the little making mechanism comes with a hanger, but it's right in the center, and I don't like that. So that's what we'll do. So we will catch you. This will be a couple days. <clears throat> all right, it's, it's all set up now. It's the next morning, and it just, you know, I'm just so pleased with this. This is the second one I've done. That is just, that is beautiful. One thing, one thing I learned though, before I do another one, I'm going to take something and dull all these points. <laughs> you know, a little grinder or something and just round all those points because they are sharp, sharp, sharp. And uh, that's not good. I don't think, I mean, you know, if it was to fall and hit somebody or something, or a, a dog or an animal, talking about falling, okay, you see that right there? That's going to be my 12 o'clock. It has a little indention there, and I don't know why, but that's, it's okay. I haven't decided if I want to put any kind of numbers on it or not. I mean, you know, most people know where 3 o'clock is and 6 o'clock. I mean, I don't think you have to have numbers. And, you know, it may distract from some of this beauty in here, like all this copper color and stuff like that. So, you know, okay, so I'm going to put a hanger on it. Now, my, my clock mechanism is not in yet. But it will be, you know, it's supposed to be in like tomorrow. So I'll put that on last, which this works out good. It, the clock mechanism has a hanger on it, but I, I don't like hanging them from the center. I'd rather hang them from up here. Uh, you know, it may not be quite as safe. I don't know. I may tie, oh, see what I'm talking about? I may tie the two together. But what I do, you see, I, I, I roughed it up. And you know, these, these have all kinds of drippings on them from you know from where they where they came off of this thing. So just I just take a, a little uh, side grinder, a little bitty one, air one, and just you know knock them down a little bit, and then I clean it all up with acetone. But what I'm what I do, I got a little bit of medium CA. It isn't Star Bond, but you know I got it. It's left over before I got Star Bond, so I you know I need to use it. No no sense in throwing it away. It costs money. So what I do is I come in here, now see I got a little black mark right there. And I'm going to make me a place like that right there, okay? Out of this. Stand up there. Then I'm going to take, if I can get this off, right? And I'm going to take and, and put a little bit on this right here. And then I'm going to stick it into that place. Just like that. Well, you better get it where you want it right away. Okay? And I'm going to hit it just... A... Well, I'll tell you what... No, I'm not. Let me tell you. I'm going to put a little more on it. I'm going to let it dry naturally. I think Accelerator makes, makes your uh, CA glue more brittle. I may be wrong, but I think it does. I'm going to come in here and do some more around it. Make sure it's really good and coated. Right in there, I'm going to come right in here a little bit too. I'm going to let that set up naturally. So that's going to be a little while because it's pretty thick. And then what I'll do next is I'll come back and, and spray the back uh, black. It's already cleaned up and ready. Well, you can you can see the acetone leaves, leaves a little bit of whiteness on it. I actually think denatured alcohol would be better. But anyway, that's, that's my next step until I get, you know, my clocks in. And then I go, go tomorrow and look for something to put on the front. But I'm not even sure I want to do this. I want to show you how beautiful this turned out. This is where I drained all my cups in. I always, every time I pour epoxy, I use this old pin mold. I mean, every time it gets full, I cut them up into, into pin blanks and take and put them on the uh, raffle table at, at my club. But look, I want you to look at that. Isn't that pretty? That could just be a picture, couldn't it? I mean, that is just so pretty in there. I'm tempted to take that out and, you know, frame it in something and make a picture out of it. Look at there, how nice and shiny it is. Now, again, that's, that's total, total boat tabletop epoxy. You can get it on my, you can get it at totalboat.com and you can use uh, Whirler, Whirler 20 and your coupon code. And you'll get almost $14 off the price, which the price is really reasonable in the first place. It's $65 and free shipping. 
and then you get $14 off that, so it's going to cost you about $52 for a gallon. That's a good deal, man, and this is some good stuff. All right. So there you are. That's where that's where we are now. So we'll, uh, I, I won't, you know, I ain't gonna film painting the back of it naturally, but I, I'll get that done, and I may come back and put a little bit of epoxy right on top of that. I, I just, I just feel better because I would hate for that sap sucker to fall. It wouldn't mess it up. I'd dull them ends now, but I'm afraid it'd mess up the finish. Should have done it before. I do know now from now on. You want to dull these points right here because I, I guarantee told you they are like needles. Okay, there you are. I'll catch you later. All right, here you go, guys. This is uh, clock number two. I put some uh, gold letters here and then got red hands on it. I think they stand out pretty good. Uh, there you go. You ought to be able to see it real good there. Here a little bit. Get back here. There you go. Looks pretty good. Lesson learned, and you always learn something. I would definitely dull these points, they're sharp as razors. A little bit of overspill there, but that looks good. This I'll take a few little steals of it. And this is going to be a present. My grandson's building a shop, and I thought this, he might like this in there. Grandson, I'm sorry, my son is building a shop. Grandsons ain't quite that old, but they're getting there. All right, thanks a lot. Subscribe, tell your friends, and call your mama. Bye-bye.